Perhaps the most requested content on my channel has come from USA Network show, White Collar. Do you understand how this works? I'm being released into the custody of the FBI under your supervision. The show about Neil Caffrey, infamous con man, pulled out of prison from the man who caught him is well loved. Seeing as my previous USA Network show reviews, Burn Notice and Psych were hits, I'd be dumb to ignore such request. Some people are just born evil. The kid from The Omen, the children of the corn, Chad Michael Murray. As someone who didn't give the show the time of day when it aired, what is so special about this anti-hero Neil Caffrey? Oh, harmless flirting, it's like a dance. No, there is no dance. You're not even on her dance card. No dancing for you. Um, she digs the hat. Um, she'd rather be wearing the hat. What is it about this show that so many people love? As usual, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Content requests are always welcomed and appreciated. White Collar debuted on the USA Network in fall of 2009. Starring Matt Bomer as the famed con man Neil Caffrey, the show would follow his close relationship with the man who caught him, special agent in charge Peter Burke, played by Tim Decay. This is a temporary situation. Help me catch a Dutchman. We can make it permanent. The two investigate high-profile white-collar crimes for the FBI with the help of Caffrey's close friend and con man, Mozzie, as well as the mom of the group, Burke's wife, Elizabeth, played by the lovely Tiffany Thiessen. The show, created by Jeff Easton, ran for six seasons and 81 total episodes. Those that have watched Psych and Burn in Us will feel a warm familiarity with White Collar. Had it not been for Agent Burke here, I'd still be in prison, rotting. You've given me way more credit than I deserve. No, 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 don't be modest, Peter. That cozy, warm blanket, solving adventures theme with your friends is back and in spades. White Collar is, out of the previous shows I've reviewed, the most procedural in design. White Collar, kind of like Burn Notice, is a hybrid of this formula, with overarching plots that span a season, but episode to episodes requiring the characters to solve a crime. Unfortunately, labeling the show as a procedural waters down the actual high-quality character writing you receive. You go back to school? I think I can handle that. Because I'm a technological virtuoso. Okay. The classical artistic fact foundation. Okay. okay, read it to yourself. Quiet now. Did we really just do that? Did you see any other option? No. So, which one of us is going to tell Peter? I vote you. Expecting more Magnum P.I. And less Super Mario. <laughs> I burned all those. <laughs> How did you get me that? No, no, no. Come on, it's let me. more Burt Reynolds, no? I'm, taking it. I'm gonna take Burt a poll. Reynolds. No, you're not gonna thing. take a poll. Oh, you're not gonna... oh, oh, that's fun. See, every morning I sit at my dining table, my lovely wife and my delicious cereal, and no thoughts of Neil Caffrey. He says it has a free sheriff's badge. Did you get it already? I'll do something. Once more, like Burn Notice and Psych, the show leans heavily on its bromance. Did you do it? Come on, man. Did you do it? I didn't do it. I'm telling you the truth, Peter. Pick that for me. Don't we need a warrant? Oh, look at you, law-abiding citizen all of a sudden. I got goosebumps. Burn noticed it was Sam Axe and Michael Weston, former war buddies who helped each other out. What do you say about holding a snake by the tail, Mike? I think it's a tiger by the tail, Sam. Yeah, well, either way, you let go of it before it eats your face up. Psych, it was Sean and Gus, childhood best friends that are nearly inseparable. White Collar, it's Burke and Caffrey. Out of all the people in my life, Mozzie, even Kate, you know, you're the only one. The only one what? You're the only person in my life I trust. Which is more like a father-son relationship than those previously mentioned. Burke, the man who famously caught Caffrey, is obsessed about keeping Caffrey straight and narrow. You'd have to arrest me. I should be arresting you right now. But you're not. Neil's smart. You know how much I like smart. Is he as smart as those Ivy League co-eds they throw at you? He's almost as brilliant as a woman I married. Like most things in life, once a criminal, always a criminal. Despite Caffrey's heroic dealings and taste of the good guy life, he still repeatedly falls to the dark side. I screwed up. Yes, you did. This creates a six season long cat and mouse between the central two characters. Each character respects each other on a level that could be seen as love, but distrusting them on a level that could be seen as a way you'd treat your sworn enemy, propelling some of the best writing and acting moments I think the network has ever seen. Said goodbye to everyone but me. Why? I don't know. Yeah, you do. Tell me. I don't know. Why? Gary? You know why. Tell me. Because you're the only one who could change my mind. I'm not lying to you now. I didn't steal the art. I think you did. Then prove it. 
writing an anti-hero is difficult. Jeff Easton walked this tightrope carefully with Caffrey, who really embodies the anti-hero persona well. Failing to walk this tightrope results in the audience 1. Not buying into when the character does one side or the other, and 2. Not falling in love with the character completely. Thankfully, Neil Caffrey is wonderfully written. USA Network was really onto something in the mid-2000s and early teens. Running their shows with complicated good guys was absolutely the hook. Shows like Monk, Burn Notice, Psych, and White Collar really led this charge. I've heard it both ways. Caffrey is no different. The basement was the easiest way in. Easiest? There's always another way. Throughout the show's run, despite his numerous good guy dealings, he reminds you of his criminal background. As soon as he relents to that underworld, you quickly find yourself frustrated. This isn't with the writing, but the character. Like Peter Burke, you quickly root for Caffrey to become the good guy he can be. This only works thanks to Easton's fantastic writing and the wonderful performance from Matt Bomer. Show me you're better than this. You show me you're a decent man. Things I've done are in the past. Which, I'm told Matt Bomer's immensely attractive. Uh, I will say he makes you question eating Taco Bell or those cheesy tots. Hey, Orida, where's my sponsorship? Come on guys, what's up? The highlight of the show is really the excellent writing between these characters. Every con man gets his heart broken once. You're not gonna break my heart. Procedurals get old fast, mainly because they all end with that neat bow on top. However, pushing character relationships and meaningful character moments makes each episode feel unique, despite that formula we are all too familiar with. I'm gonna find you, Keller. That might be tough. I'm already outside your radius. Hey, Caffrey. You're starting to sound like a lawman. Whether it be Peter and his wife Elizabeth, Neil and Mozzie trying to con their way out of, well, anything, or Peter with anyone on his team, everyone eventually builds this chemistry, this love that makes it feel like everyone actually works together and likes working together. For the record, I'd like to maintain that I still shit. Can <laughs> I still shit? He does still shit. <laughs> we all do. White Collar reminds me of taking the best bits of Psych and the best bits of Burn Notice and screwing them together. Does that mean White Collar is the best of these shows? Well, no. Fuck a duck. White Collar does get a bit goofy. Between the absolutely ridiculous product placement. Why is there a tree on your dashboard? It's a hybrid, showing me how efficiently I'm driving. You're not driving very green. What, what? Please just stop. Oh, make it stop. Stop playing with oh, the button. Keeps oh, there's a BMW. Oh, please stop. Or these horrific green screen shots. Oh, they're so bad. Blue. Hey, sweetie. Oh, hey, Al. I was San Francisco. It's amazing here. I biked across the bay this morning to watch the sunrise. White color fits right in with these shows, but I don't think it's the best of these shows. In all honesty, gun to my head, I don't think I could really pick. Feel free to leave me a comment ranking your USA Network shows. I'd be really interested to hear what people rank each shows from this period. White Collar is a well-written procedural that once again displays that the USA Network was hot in the late 2000s. You can find all six seasons streaming for free on Amazon Prime right now. Thanks so much for watching. As usual, leave me recommendations for future episodes of Lost and Found. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks, Tots.